front passenger and a projection in the center for both. Together with a simple to use gesture control, this system points the way to the future of HMI design in automotive technology. I'm sure you have now enough appetite to try this by yourself on our booth. Ladies and gentlemen, all these new functions are made possible by a revolutionary approach in our electronic architecture. With the new Audi A3, the modular infotainment power custom is celebrating its premiere. The central computer integrates the MMX board, the multimedia extension. It's hard, it's a high performance Tegra architecture from our strategic partner NVIDIA. And the benefit is that Audi is absolutely up to date and online with the latest and greatest trends in consumer electronics, like you see it here in smartphones and tablets and so on. But to tell you more about this really uh, breaking through the uh, way of technology, I'm absolutely glad to welcome the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huan. Jensen, please come to us on the stage. Last year here at CES, uh, you had a very, very uh, good uh, uh, part uh, in our press conference at the keynote uh, in Hilton of our CEO, Rupert Stadler. Uh, and you both uh, introduced uh, that uh, this new MMX architecture last year based on the Tegra uh, 20 is uh, the baby of our uh, uh, common uh, partnership uh, and the teams really made good progress. So this year uh, I think uh, we both have to announce something uh, new again. That's right. Last year was incredibly exciting. And in fact, last year was really the culmination of work that started from a conversation that you and I had some five, six years before that, where you told me about the Audi vision and the Audi Connect strategy and, and how you want to make the car revolutionary for the world. And in order to make that possible, you needed two things. You needed a state-of-the-art processor, mobile processor, that's incredibly powerful but extremely low. Uh, power so that it's energy efficient, which in a car translates to fuel efficiency, and you also needed state-of-the-art computer graphics. And the thing that you wanted to do was you wanted to not only do that once, but you recognized that computer technology was advancing so quickly. Absolutely. You wanted to do that year in and year out, and be the first company, first car company in the world to be able to keep up with consumer electronics, and that the car industry can someday become part of the major consumer electronics industry. And last year we. Uh, we demonstrated the first of our results after five years of great effort. And now we can see it uh, in the new in, uh, Audi A3, uh, what uh, uh, well, enthusiastic uh, features uh, this uh, partnership offers uh, uh, finally in the system. That's right. And then one year later, just as at this show we announced the Tegra 3 processor, it is the most advanced mobile processor in the world today, and we announced the devices with Tegra 3 in it, at the same exact show, one year later, we are announcing with you the next generation of the Audi MX model. And ladies and gentlemen, what you see here is the MMX board equipped with the latest and greatest architecture from NVIDIA, the Tegra 3 processor, and we have it already in our MMX board. And at the same time it comes out, in consumer electronics devices like this. Unbelievable for a car company. It's really, really exciting. So this gives us a, 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 a <laughs> This gives us a speed uh, which we never had before. And uh, this Tegra 3 uh, architecture will be uh, the next step uh, in in, in our infotainment systems uh, and uh, I, I think uh, everybody can look forward to uh, what we show next. That's right, it's, it gives me nothing but joy to see the vision that you had and that Audi had for the automotive industry and to be 
make it possible starting last year. And it's a great honor for us to learn a great deal about the automotive industry from you. And the thing that the audience probably doesn't know is how influential you have to be with your engineering team on the mobile processor roadmap so that the processors, when it's available in the marketplace, can be absolutely perfect for Audi and the right time. So that, uh, this collaboration has been very wonderful for us, and I want to thank you all for it. And congratulations. Thank you all for coming to my side. significant major trend in this decade are the driver assistance systems. They make driving simpler and safer. Audi already has a highly extensive portfolio in this area. These systems are closely networked and blend the vehicle, a high level of intelligence. At our booth, we can experience all the various systems in a highly realistic and impressive way in our driving simulator. I give you some examples, like you see here. The adaptive cruise control, the stop and go, the Audi side assist, the Audi parking assistant, or the Audi lane assist. Our vision of pilot driving, like we call it, reads the following. Whenever I don't want to drive, I allow myself to be driven, in traffic jammed or when parking. And uh, when I want to have fun, I drive myself, but i show you this later on. First, uh, I'm going to give you an example of how in future a congestion pilot can look like. So once you come with your car to a situation where uh, there is a congestion, the car recognizes this situation and uh, it offers you the possibility to hand over the control from you to the car and you can use this time maybe for an intensive phone call or for a video conference and the car has all the surroundings uh, aware uh, if, uh, if a cars come in or, or, or get out uh, and uh, while piloted driving you can use this time much more valuable for you and once the traffic jam is over the situation is recognized by the intelligent car the driver takes over the, the control again uh, uh, and he drives away and Audi we do not talk about autonomous driving, but instead about pilot driving. In a similar way to an aircraft, the final responsibility still lies with the captain to say in the hand of the driver. Beside all these visions, one thing still remains important for Audi. We don't want to create impersonal body moving machines. But I want to have fun. I drive by myself. Ladies and gentlemen, Audi stands for Progressive Luxury and we showed you here seven areas of technologies and the, uh, of uh, Audi Connect with a lot of innovations which are absolutely near on the market. We are making great strides toward our vision. Audi, the perfect mobile device, always on, seamless connectivity, an aware machine that notices the influence of the environment, reacts and offers a safe haven with a custom configuration that draws the information from the cloud when things get stressful, piloted driving, on the open road fun driving, you control a system of written words, speech and gestures, situationally and intuitively, you are the embedded system in your car, seamlessly networked, as if it were the most natural thing in the world, like the smartphone in the hand of a child. Thank you. We lose cellular connectivity in terms of using your searching for navigation, number one. 
And number two, is your searching uh, cloud service provider only Google? And what would you do in a backup situation in the case that Google changes their business model to provide such a service? Yes. To the first question, um, it is not black or white. Uh, we use a, a kind of an metallic hybrid uh, approach. That means uh, uh, important data is always stored uh, in, the, in the memory uh, of the system or we cache it. Uh, uh, so when, when you drive the first time uh, uh, a road, uh, we cache all the area uh, around to, to a, a, a certain uh, diameter and uh, if the connection uh, is lost, uh, then uh, we are using the internal data in, in, in the system. Uh, Typically, to come to the, to the second question, uh, we have uh, a flexible and mod modular system architecture. That means uh, uh, we have the possibility uh, uh, to use this or that database. Uh, today we are absolutely happy and, and fine uh, uh, with the data uh, coming from uh, the uh, Google database and we see no need to change it. Yes. Yes, uh, Max Kummer from uh, DWTV. I got a question to the congestion um, helper in the system where you where you get the traffic information via internet. Is it also possible that uh, the car uh, reports congestions or traffic jams uh, to the server, or is it just um, pulling? No, we, 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 we do, as I mentioned, uh, use the crowd intelligence of the approach and uh, the information comes from the mobiles uh, which are carried in the cars. So they're, they're sending up the information uh, and over a service provider uh, they send it down. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you. Johannes Winterhagen from ATZ. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your LTE introduction plans uh, and uh, what your expectation is when the LTE network in Europe and maybe in the US is um, uh, set up uh, in a, a huge infrastructure? As I mentioned um, before, we were the first to introduce the UMTS uh, into our house. And this uh, basically open the door uh, uh, to provide a lot of this beautiful functionality you have seen today in uh, the, 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 the short movies and therefore it's our aim to have been absolutely prepared uh, on time once and now uh, this is uh, the most important information that uh, it depends on the coverage and when the coverage is enough um, um, that uh, it, it makes sense uh, to offer it uh, uh, to, to the customer we will be right there. 2013? We absolutely uh, be prepared. Uh, <laughs> and uh, from our side, uh, we wish as soon as possible because it offers a fantastic functionality. There's one more question here. <laughs> well, no, it was LTE. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, in the cars that were equipped with um, LTE uh, functionality, uh, do you have an option when buying the car to get a contract with a mobile provider, for example, in Germany? Um, uh, I'm asking this because most of the LTE tariffs that are offered at the moment have got a, a volume limit in them. Uh, so if you use a smartphone together with that is LTE enabled, you most probably got a limit of 10 or 20 gigabytes per, uh, per month, which might just not be enough for the kind of things that you want to enable um, inside the car. So what's the solution there? Do you have an, an own contract for the car and an own volume limit or what does this look like? I think there is a lot of movement in all these data plans uh, in, the next, in the next years uh, around uh, the introduction of, of LTE. Uh, it would be uh, yeah, 
reading something a little bit in, in the cloud, uh, how the data plans in 2014 will, will be exactly and what is uh, the best marketing package to, to bring it in, in our cars. Uh, we prepare uh, technically wise and uh, on the given time, then uh, we are looking what is the most valuable data plan uh, and then we <coughs> Henry Palacci with Digital Family Advisors. I have a US-centric question to ask. You've no doubt heard about the NTSB recommendation to limit the use of phones in cars because of the statistics that have come out that uh, link, I think it was nearly 3,200 deaths in the US to the use of car, to the use of phones in cars. I think often for texting, not necessarily for using the phone, but some of those clearly were distracted driving because of the use of the phone. You showed a very impressive demonstration with your pilot of driving concept, but that looks very futuristic, not something that's being done right now. Um, so how do you how do you manage that risk? How do you manage that possible liability for companies like Audi? Yeah, um, th that's a very very good question, and, and uh, please uh, let me hand over to Johan Dinajen, the president of Audi of America, because we had this discussion already in, in the morning in our roundtable. Johan, I think. Uh, uh, thanks, Ricky. Yes, that's a good question, and of course, that really gets to the real heart of the whole issue. I mean, it, it, it stands to reason that we have to ask the question, why are we doing all this? And we're doing it for this express reason, to minimize driver distraction. You know, if, if I could use a little bit of simple language, you can't force water to run uphill. It wants to run downhill. And our mobile devices today have become such I almost want to say for some people, central part of their lives. Um, and we build and plan and execute so much about any lives around it that it's somehow hard to imagine that if this is such an entrenched behavior that the minute we get into uh, our automobiles that suddenly we're going to put the device away and live in this, this cocoon where we don't interact with the world around us. What is the alternative? The real alternative is that people will use this device while they're driving. And you are right. This is also the statistics that we've now seen and the majority of it comes <coughs> from texting while driving. Now you add all the functions that already are coming onto the smartphones, <coughs> navigation, uh, online search, and you could potentially find people sitting with their hand above the steering wheel <laughs> plugging away at this device. I think that one can legislate and, and obviously uh, this is not an area for us, we respond to the world around us. Um, what we are trying to do is to now say, if that is the reality, how do we turn this around so that we ensure absolutely seamless integration with the functionality that comes through these devices, with the controls of the vehicle, and execute that functionality in such a way that it minimizes distraction. And so I, I want to illustrate this by, by really referring to uh, 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 what for some of us might be a real life example. So imagine you're driving home and you've uh, just finished a telephone conversation with your wife where she has berated and scolded you because you've forgotten that she went into this room. Now what you might do is to then fiddle around with this machine, try to do a Google search for the nearest forest shop, and then tell the navigation system, pull that up as well and ask it to take you there. With this technology available today, it's not futuristic, it's available in the Audi that you can buy from your dealer today. The very next thing that you would do is you hit the talk button on your steering wheel and you would say one word, FLOST. And it's going to pull all that data down for you and it will throw up for you the selection, by the way, visually as well as acoustically, and you can simply say start to the recommended one, the nearest one, or select one, number two, three, or four, depending on your preference. And the car will automatically navigate you. Now that is about as seamless as you can make it. And uh, that is what we try to do. Uh, we obviously want to be good corporate citizens as well, and so naturally it stands to reason that we will comply with, uh, with the legislative framework that might regulate this. But we also think that it is a reality that for many people, uh, their car is also their place of work. And to imagine somehow that we could shut down all communication while people are in their car, I think would also probably not be practical in real life. And uh, we think that the avenue that we uh, propose here and already execute and offer 
is really the most practical and feasible way forward. Thank you, Thank you. There's time for one more question. Yes, Thank you, Wilfried Nitschke from IV in Germany. Uh, you, I think you have a very powerful hardware platform to introduce more soft, software functionality. Is Audi intending to sell software as a product, for example, an Audi App Store, something, something like this? Is this intended? That's a, a very good uh, question, Mr. Nitschke. Um, what I have to, 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 to add to this uh, technology is uh, that the software on the MM export is made by our joint venture, e -dot solution, e -dot solution, which we have together with the Finnish company Electrobit. And uh, they are able to get the best software in the world, the navigation from this, speech from Nuance, the uh, operating system from, from QNX, the, the multimedia uh, drivers from, from NVIDIA, uh, and so on. We are able to do by our own the high-level functionality. And uh, for the apps, uh, we um, having now a kind of bridge technology because HTML5 is not uh, available in that form uh, we need it. Uh, we have a bridge technology, we call it Remote HMI, uh, where we can uh, bring apps uh, where we think they are useful uh, to support uh, the driver uh, uh, while this technology to our operating concept and the driver can this uh, uh, operate basically, basically for informational things to navigate and, and, and so on over our approved Audi MMI. This is a stretch. Uh, Stefan Radomski, uh, EAPD Newswire. Um, but you're not, sorry, but you're not planning to hook up to any any um, big um, apps or like uh, Android Store or uh, Google or something. So so I can have my private apps that I have on my smartphone as well in my car. I will give this question to Matthias Hardinger, our chief architect officer for all these systems. Uh, I think he can explain it best. Yeah, I love um, this is a very good question since many people are asking, can I use my iPhone apps or can I use my Android apps, Blackberry apps, whatever, in the car directly. Um, it's not an easy question. Most of these apps, hundreds of thousands or more, are not designed, they are not designed for use in the car. Hopefully agreed. Um, but they are good uh, to be, uh, to give you information for your flight schedule, whatever, yeah, in, in AdWords of your driving. So um, we consider a sandbox design, and at the moment we see a lot of fragmentation. There is a, there is a big move into Android, there's in the same way iPhone is very successful, Blackberry tries to, to get up. Um, what I see, what is a good hope for us, and uh, this is already visible, that HTML5, what was considered here, can make a big difference here. It brings a lot of interaction for web apps, and makes it more abstract. And this is the way we would like to follow. And the remote HMI, what we're providing here, is a mapper to existing apps. So it needs a wrapping, it's not a complex process, but it gives us control about the, the usability. And of course, we can say, we can install it or not, we can use it while driving or not, but it's quite good. And uh, the more we have these generic apps, HTML5, as a Google, big players driving this, it will be replaced. Flash. Uh, this gives you a lot of uh, functionality. It has a rich user experience. It has a full multimedia uh, support. And it gives you a lot of controlled interactivity. So my prediction is this will be a game changer, and we will follow this strategy. And you will see in the near future a lot of those things. But you can download from our Audi web shop. That does not necessarily mean we create all these apps. We just press them. That's the idea. So this comes as your question. Thank you. If you like, you can go further in one-on-one -on -one talks. So we'll be here for the entire day. You can visit our booth as well. I say thank you for participating in our press conference. Have a good stay here in Vegas. Have a good stay in CS. Thank you.